Hi, I'm Alan Gafour. I'm a negotiator. I've negotiated for business and I've also negotiated for my own life. Catch me this week on The Jesse T Show. Alan, great to see you, brother. Hey, Jesse, good to see you, man. Man, we, uh, we had a conversation a couple of weeks back about you being on the show and you literally have a story I haven't heard of yet. Um, <laughs> you, have a, you have a story that would be unbelievable even if Hollywood produced it. Right. And so I want to hear the full nitty gritty details of your life, your journey, these remarkable situations you found yourself in, how you got out of them, and then a little bit about uh, your journey moving forward, brother. So tell us who you are. What, what do you do? Okay, cool. Uh, so look, I'm Alan Gafour. I'm a negotiator. I'm a deal maker, broker, closer. Um, I've worked in many different industries across the world. Um, I have done corporate stuff. I have done government stuff and I have done government agency stuff. So yeah, a, a wide variety of uh, experience, as you would say. And um, I started off in business. I, I grew up in business. My father was entrepreneurial. My, my, my history, it's in my blood because um, my mother was born in Pakistan, but my grandparents on my mother's side were actually traders. And I think their history goes back to the silk trade route and all that. But they were actually traders across Malaysia and China and India. And um, so, yeah, man, it's, it's in the blood, you know, making deals, negotiating and, and doing business. So when you say that uh, it's been passed down generationally, what were some of your, 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 the ones that came before you in terms of uh, relatives? What were they doing in terms of entrepreneurship or business that, that got you into this world? Um, so, you know, the, the, the history, I don't, I, I don't know. It's only what I've been told because I never got to experience my uh, grandparents because unfortunately they passed away when I was born. And, um, but from the tales that I've been told from my mom and from other relatives, um, my, my granddad was a very successful trader and he traded in uh, fabrics and spices and he was back and forth. And so, you know, I mean, my, my mother was born in, um, uh, I think it was uh, like in the 40s. And she was born in Pakistan because uh, Pakistan was a newly formed nation. And for some reason, they decided to settle there. And so she was telling me when she was young growing up, you know, they had a real nice house they had maids and servants you know back back in the 40s and uh so yeah so she she was telling me about her lifestyle and and you know explaining the things that they'd experience and then the tales that obviously her father had told her of his trading days um and then uh, unfortunately it was taken away from them because they they were robbed by bandits who almost beat her father to death in front of her. Wow. And she was about five years old and with four or five other sisters. And basically they left him for dead and they stole everything. And back then, you know, your wealth was your gold and, and your money. That's how people accumulated their wealth. And fortunately she goes, for some reason, he had actually planted up some, some of his wealth in one of the fields that he owned which so they took everything that was in the house but there was just some left and she goes after that you know he after after he recovered from his injuries he got back into business she goes but he never he never managed to make it back to the uh, levels of wealth that he'd accumulated before but he managed to keep a roof over their heads and, and sustain them so yeah it's a kind of interesting history that's incredible man and so you were set on your path also by this narrative of, of familial success. Like you have this family member that probably was the, the, the patriarch of the family, someone who right. was looked upon as, as the provider and someone who was looked upon as successful. And so those stories resonated with you through your mom. How did mm. it chart you on your path? What was one of your first endeavors? Even as a kid, what were you doing uh, entrepreneurially? Uh, 
Yeah, you know, you know, the funny thing is that when I was uh, 12 years old, 13 years old, so I know in the US, I think you call them high schools, we call them secondary school, right? And I, and I actually went to a grammar school, but it wasn't, it's not as posh as it sounds. We have grammar schools in the UK that are private, and then we also have state run ones. And I actually went to one that was a little bit sort of rough and ready. It was, uh, you had to be able to handle yourself. And at first, I kind of didn't because here I am, I'm thrown into this school, 650 plus pupils. And there's only a handful of colored pupils in there, right? BIPOC, right? And um, as they say, and, and, um, and then so it's encountering racism and, you know, trying to grow with that and, and, and bullying and everything else. So once I kind of got over that and, and the way I did that was my father said to me, look, you know, you can either be bullied or you can stand up for yourself. And he said, you know, always remember when you bully a bully, they always back off. He said, so it's a decision you've got to make. And um, that's what I did. So that, that, that eased all of that off and got me a reputation for, OK, you know what, leave him alone. And from there, what happened was uh, knowing that there was no tuck shop, right? There was no snacks. There was no things available. I figured out if I became the guy, the go to guy, then everybody would buy off me and I could charge ridiculously inflated prices because it was a captive market. <laughs> so then what happened was I would pick up stuff through my dad's business. But then also there was the scallywags, right? There was the rogues in the, in, in the, in their school who would on the way into school every morning, they would have shoplifting and they'd pick up the girly mags and they'd pick up cigarettes and they'd try and nick some booze. And so basically I'd go around, go around school with this huge satchel, which was essentially a mobile, you know, shop that had everything from, you know, girly mags to cigarettes to small bottle miniatures <laughs> of booze to sweets to chocolates to any, anything anybody wanted, I'd try and get it for them.